So, I got a question from Nameless Person. What is the max boron a day a 200 pound guy can take? Not how I would have phrased it. So I believe this viewer wants to know the maximum amount that he can supplement as a 200 pound person without it causing any health problems and questionable blood readings. Or maybe he wants to know how much boron he'd need to kill a 200 pound man. Luckily there is a big difference between both numbers. However, I might as well use this opportunity to discuss the optimal dosage of consumption or supplementation. Because it should be obvious that the maximum amount someone can supplement does in no way reveal what the optimal amount should be. You see, boron is not an element that gets a lot of attention in the nutrition world. It's clear by its numerous benefits regarding disease protection and hormonal health and many other things that it is an essential mineral. Still, it is not yet considered as such and there is not even a recommended daily allowance set by the Food and Nutrition Board. Without an established number, most people are well left in the blue about boron altogether and it makes it even more challenging to determine what would be an optimal amount for daily performance or even a minimal required intake to stay healthy. So that is what we are going to find out today. Let's start by establishing how much is too much. What is the upper limit for boron? Let's get back to the aforementioned question. What is the max boron a day a 200 pound guy can take? While there is no official recommended intake, there is an official upper limit. The upper limit for boron supplementation is set at 20 milligrams for adults. That means that it is believed that supplementing up to 20 milligrams of boron is unlikely to cause any adverse health outcomes for adults. But supplementation beyond that amount might give some people a headache or digestive distress. To be fair, the listed consequences of crossing the supposed upper limit of boron tend to be quite mild from what I have found. And even then, this upper limit is only set for supplementation. There's no data on the upper limit for whole food sources, which might or might not work differently in the body at such intakes. Also, just because you don't get immediate health problems from taking something doesn't mean it's without risk. While it's safe to say that supplementing more than 20 milligrams will make at least some of us sick, questionable blood readings can be observed by supplemental intakes as low as 10 milligrams. But I will get to that in a bit. How much boron can kill a person? Now, if this person was actually asking me how much boron is required to kill a 200 pound man, I can answer that too. To kill the average adult, one would have to orally ingest between 15 and 20 grams of boron. Between 15 and 20 grams, mind you, not milligrams. It suffice to say that 20 grams of boron is enough to kill almost everyone, including a 200 pound man. We also know that 5 to 6 grams of boron is enough to kill an infant. So, parents, beware, don't let your kids near pure boron. It is unlikely that you will find grams of unrefined boron in the ground, however, certain laundry detergents, toilet cleaners and pesticides and many other products can contain deadly amounts of boron. Or more specifically, borate, which is a boron oxygen compound. And while I couldn't find a name list of cleaning products containing borate, it is apparently commonly used in production and it's hard to miss. But if you want to kill someone with boron, instead of trying to get them to down a glass of toilet duck, you can also just buy pure borax online. It's very cheap in fact. About 10 to 20 euros the kilo or like 12 to 25 dollars per 2.2 pounds. However, I hope I don't have to say this to my lovely viewers, but please don't try to kill people with boron. There are much better ways, like selenium. Anyway, you now know everything about the toxic properties of boron. With that being said, it is a pretty lame and ineffective poison. Boron and estrogen. At which point are you taking too much boron? I'm not talking about the upper limit here, which as we all know is 20 milligrams. No, I want to be sure. At which point can boron supplementation become problematic? At which point do you get questionable results in your blood work? 
Well, we do know that a long-term dose of 10 milligrams a day could increase your estrogen levels. One study found that supplementing boron at 10 milligrams per day for four weeks increases serum estradiol from 52 picomol per liter to 74 picomol per liter in 18 apparently healthy men. That is not a small increase, mind you, but it is a very interesting finding for two reasons. Because one, the opposite has been observed when the same dose was given for only a week instead of four weeks. In fact, one week supplementing 10 milligrams of boron a day led to a 40% decrease in estradiol. Also, and here comes the second reason on why this is so interesting, 10 milligrams of boron is a dosage that has been researched in several studies for its testosterone boosting effects. And that might actually be the very thing that helps explain this increase in estrogen in the longer run. You see, at least part of our testosterone gets turned into estrogen. This is normal and it is a good thing. Yes, even in men. Men need estrogen. So it could be said that this increase in estrogen from taking boron is not even necessarily a bad thing and arguably an unavoidable consequence from boosting your testosterone. But I'll go over it in another video where I will discuss it at length because it is a very large topic. However, with this knowledge, it can be assumed that 10 milligrams a day is more than enough for anyone and perhaps too much. If you are worried about the estrogen, then perhaps a lower dose would be better suited. But now that we know how much is too much, we have to figure out how much we need to stay healthy. The minimum intake. Yes, how much do you need to stay healthy? Well, it's said that if your intake of boron falls below 0.25 milligrams per 2000 calories, you might end up excreting more magnesium and calcium through your urination, which can lead to a cascade of metabolic problems. However, such a low intake of boron would only occur if someone were to follow a very calorically restrictive diet or one completely devoid of plant matter. There have also been several studies done with the same intake of 0.25 milligrams per 2000 calories showing that such intakes lead to impaired brain function. And the impairment is nothing to laugh at. According to these studies, manual dexterity, eye-hand coordination, attention, perception, encoding, short-term and long-term memory all seem to become impaired at these lower intakes. And higher intakes of around 3.3 milligrams in these studies were shown to actually improve all these markers. However, this data is limited because as far as I can tell, it is mostly done on older people. But I'd still argue that you'd probably want to aim for more than the typical 1.3 milligrams that most people get from their diets. Aiming to have a boron intake of let's say 2 to 3 milligrams a day on average is probably a good and safe bet that most people can benefit from. However, is that an ideal intake? Determining the ideal dose. We know that as little as 1.5 milligrams of boron is enough to get some of the health benefits and anything below a milligram is unlikely to have any measurable effect. However, a lot more benefits seem to occur at 3 milligrams. It has not really been determined at which point we start getting the hormonal benefits from boron, but 3 milligrams is probably too little to really cause a noticeable change in this area. We do know for sure that 2.5 milligrams doesn't raise testosterone at all. But at 3 milligrams, it does help to spare vitamin D3 in the body, which is also a steroid hormone. It seems the average person needs between 3 and 6 milligrams to receive most of the health benefits that boron has to offer. So I'd say a very large person might be better off getting anywhere between 5 and 8 milligrams a day. I personally consume as much as 8 milligrams a day through food. I feel that I am at my best when I have an intake of 4 to 6 milligrams. And I don't experience noticeable benefits when going beyond that amount. I certainly don't feel worse, but at least to me, there seems to be no added benefit of going beyond 4 to 6 milligrams. However, what I suggest is based on my anecdotal experience and also just by observing at which dose most benefits are gained, according to science. Everyone is different and at the end of the day, your ideal intake is something you should determine for yourself. But some people might want to have a better indication than my opinion. 
So it begs the question, is there some hard evidence available that gives us an idea what the ideal amount actually is? Well, there is one indicator that we could use. We could see which population has the highest intake of boron. Maximum boron intake from whole foods by population. The previously mentioned upper limit of 20 milligrams is not an amount you'd ever get from eating whole foods, unless you'd go on a raisin diet. And even then supplementation is probably in order if you really want to reach it. With a balanced diet, most people only ingest about 1 to 1.4 milligrams a day. And vegans get about 3 milligrams, since boron is mostly found in plant foods. While we don't even wildly recognize boron deficiency as an actual thing for humans, in the plant kingdom, a boron deficiency is the most common deficiency of all, which is why almost all plant fertilizers contain boron. And maybe if our food is low in boron, that perhaps translates to a lower and even deficient intake for humans as well. And we do know that there are areas where the boron content in soil is a lot higher than here in the West. There is an interesting epidemiological study where researchers tried to see if boron was protective to cervical cancer. I won't go in depth about the study, as I already do that in this video, links in the description below. But the paper tells us that in certain areas in Turkey, women were consuming an average of 8.4 milligrams of boron a day through their daily unsupplemented diet. These women were not vegan, but water is a rich source of the mineral in those areas, which is also likely what leads to plants and fruits containing higher levels as well. Men were not included in the study as, uh, well, like I said, the study was on cervical cancer risk. But it's not a far stretch that men from these areas were consuming over 10 milligrams of boron on average. Some people, and perhaps many have evolved on a diet much richer in boron than we see here in the West, which could indicate that Westerlings don't get enough. However, as things currently stand, I do believe in my recommendation of 3 to 8 milligrams, depending on one size. That seems like a safe medium that gives most of the benefits while limiting potential drawbacks. And unfortunately, it will take time before we get a more precise answer. Now, if you want to learn more about boron, you should check out my nutrition playlist. It contains several videos on the topic and other nutrition related subjects as well. I also have many videos on fitness and much, much more. Just check out the links in the description under this video. There are also some ebooks and possibly some merch available. Anyway, that's the video. Have a nice day, everyone, and I'll see you all next time.